You're listening to Witch Wednesdays, your weekly podcast source for all things witchcraft in the modern world. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. I'm Steph, and you are listening to a Yule episode, but we're going to be chatting about more about the, the, just Yule because I have a guest with me today who needs no introduction, but we're going to do it anyway, so take it away. Uh, Hello, Tara. Welcome back. Yeah, life got crazy. I swear we were going to do way more episodes, but I'm here now, so yay. I know we had every intention of doing them, and then all of a sudden it's like December, and we're like, okay, but like actually what happened? Uh, I have stories on stories, but let's start with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that's like our plan. So we're going to kind of like see how it goes and uh, see what we have to talk about. But we are going to start with you all and then sort of talk about what Tara has been up to in terms of her witchcraft practice. But since a lot of you are here for you all, we are going to chat about that. We're going to run over some things that we've already talked about in previous episodes, because I think you have done every you all episode. Yes. Even I though love Yule. it's one of my favorites, even though I hate winter. Yeah. And I was gonna I was gonna say, even though I think this is what are we on now? The third Yule episode. So even mm-hmm. though you weren't officially on as a co-host last Yule or this Yule, you have still been on both of those episodes because yeah. it's one of your <laughs> and Beltane too, like because those Beltane are the two favorite and are my, Yeah, they seriously are. They're the best. Yeah. So I knew, you know, you would have to be on this one. So we have covered like some of the information that we're going to cover today, but I know people want to hear it again. They like have a reminder. It's just good to hear the information. The more it's repeated to you, the more you remember, but we are going to talk about some new stuff before we dive into just random chatting. (laughs) Yeah. At least that's the plan. So the first thing, as we always do, is the correspondences, which we did the very first year, but we are going to run over again. And I'm actually going to let Tara go ahead and run through the entire list because she's got it in front of her. Oh, I do actually. I was writing this <laughs> up right before she hit record about how I have all my screens on. So uh, the correspondences, let's start with animals, uh, deer, squirrels, robins, owls, ravens, cows, and oxen, which I I feel like they're associated with almost every holiday, but uh, bears. So it's a lot of things that you'd actually see in the wintertime. Um, although if you see a squirrel, leave that squirrel alone. It's very confused. It's cold also. But a lot of these things are associated with um, both winter or uh, the coming out of winter because bears also hibernate in winter. But when they come back, it's springtime and summer and we're all about the sun coming back at this point. I am. You are, yeah. I'm so am. It's funny that this is one of my favorite holidays since I really do hate winter. I know, it's true. Yeah, both I can totally see, but this one I'm like, why? Right? (laughs) Uh, Colors are red, green, gold, silver, white, blue. Think your favorite Christmas tree. Like they stole all of this from us. So those are the colors that are really associated with Yule. (laughs) True. It's so true. Uh, food and drink are Yule logs, cookies, gingerbread, turkey, ham. Uh, I always mispronounce this, even though I make it every year. Wasal, which is basically fancy hot cider. It's amazing. You can also add mm-hmm. wine. Also amazing. <laughs> Eggnog. Um, the herbs, you'll not be surprised, are like clove and cinnamon and nutmeg, peppermint, chamomile. Think of all the things that make hot cider the best thing ever. That's pretty much all of your herbs that you're going to be embracing. Uh, Trees and plants also associated are like mistletoe, sage. I didn't say peppermint. I meant to peppermint, (laughs) holly, juniper, uh, fir, pine, poncetas, which are totally deadly to dogs. Do not have a live one in your house. If you have a dog that will eat it like my stupid dog would. Big cats too. <laughs> cats too. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, just bad. Bad bad for animals, but pretty to look at. They're very pretty to look like. Also, I don't encourage anyone to try eating them. They're just deadly in general. So don't eat them yourself. Because you're like, oh, if the cat can't have it, I'm gonna eat it. That's a bad. <laughs> so then crystals. Again, think the colors, uh, emeralds, rubies, bloodstones, clear quartz, diamond, goldstone, garnet, all the pretty colors, basically. We like those reds and greens and then clears and silvers. Uh, The deities that are most associated with this are the sun gods and goddesses, Odin, Saturn, uh, holly and oak god or kings. Um, If you are interested in druidity you probably this is when king arthur 
is considered to be reborn. Uh, he's kind of a version of the sun god, similarly, but it's the Druid king, Arthur Uther Pendragon. Uh, he is considered to be reborn along with the sun. So they kind of tie into all of that. Those are the major correspondences. Uh, of course, <laughs> for Yule logs, you can do cake. You can also uh, burn logs in your home. If you have the capacity, don't just set fire in the middle of the floor. Uh, things of that nature. So as we all know, I love fire. So this is a fire holiday. <laughs> <laughs> that's maybe, that's you, yeah, maybe that's why you really like yule and bell even though it's cold you like it's you good. just love fire well, i do i'm drinking hot tea as we are talking about this which is funny because you are heavy libra in your chart aren't you oh I yeah think you're sun, I'm, you, sun and moon right libra sun and moon are both libra yep and then which the is, other one is edge of uh libra beginning of i can't remember but yeah it's like right on the edge of libra so it's almost three yeah, so like, no, like all air. <laughs> yeah. you were just, so I don't know where this love of fire came from. But. Oh, it's so nice, though. I just love it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really do. That is really absolutely do. hilarious. <laughs> Um, yeah, so those are the correspondences which we have talked about in years past, and there are like so many more. So if you have any, you know, others or questions, like there are absolutely old episodes that you can reference where we talk about these like in much more detail, and also about how to use said correspondences yes. <laughs> um, rather than just lifting out that's what we did in the very first episode about Yule in 2020 um mm -hmm. we went over the correspondences but then also how to use those within mm -hmm. your witchcraft so this is just like a sort of summary it's a <laughs> yeah uh so the next thing that we're going to get into that we've been talking about this year are the ancient sites that are related to the various sabbaths um mm -hmm. so there are a fuel for few for fuel excuse me <laughs> that. that took me a minute there uh, there are a few and that is because yule is also the winter solstice so that mm -hmm. is when the day is the shortest and night is the longest the exact opposite of Letha. so there are a ton of ancient sites that sort of line up with those two holidays which we know because it's usually some sort of reflection of the light. So the light shines mm -hmm. through in a certain way and it only shines through during those two holidays because right. of how the sun is lined up. So there are a few, so we've talked about them in the Letha episode and they will likely also appear on this episode. Uh, so the first one is the most famous and that is Stonehenge in England. It's amazing, and, guys. I want to see it. Yeah, that is one of the most famous archaeological sites in the entire world. And that mm -hmm. is those rocks that are you know positioned they're you know in a circle on southern england yes. and it, people archaeologists really don't know like where it came from like <laughs> what it you is don't know what who it built it. Like, it's like yeah it's 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 like a complete mystery everything about it is a mystery the, one of the best parts is uh dating they've done on the site show that it was built over almost 1500 years so it wasn't built all at once. It was built over time by obviously a society that cared a lot about the sun and moon. Yeah, so which is just it's so crazy. And then yeah, when the amazing. sun sets on the winter solstice, so on Yule, mm -hmm. the sun's rays align with the central altar stone and then what's called the slaughter stone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's great. Um, so. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, the altar stone and the slaughter stone, um, which that is coming in 2023. Somebody asked that in the survey of whether to go over sacrifices and um, historical sacrifices and whether that is true or not true in witchcraft and like how that relates. So that is coming. <laughs> so, I, yeah. Whoever so asked that, fun. kudos. I like it. Yeah. So that will be very fun. Um, so, yeah. So since those like rays line up, this is a very popular spot to visit at this time of year so you know mm -hmm. witchcraft or not just like tourists in general like just love it like it's a vis visually beautiful sight to see so that is probably yes. the most famous out of all of them but there are other ones if you'd go to visit though word of warning they will not let you set foot on the actual site anymore because people were stealing stones so don't do that but <laughs> a lot of yeah, times that, they just... there's so many people they won't let you actually on the site but it's really pretty to see even if you don't go on a high holy day yeah, which is just, just terrible. Like, few people have to ruin it for everyone else. Yeah, don't do not do that. Don't ruin it for everyone else. Exactly. 
there is also New Grange, which is in Ireland instead of England. Mm-hmm. And that is dating back to about 3200 BC. And that is like a series of tunnels and different channels. And then during the sunrise on the winter solstice, the sun will go into the main chambers of this sort of tunnel system. Um, So archaeologists, yeah, archaeologists interpret that to mean that it was built for this particular day. But again, we don't really know, but it's just the one day of the year that the sun lines up. So we think that it is related to Yule. We guesstimate. (laughs) <laughs> like in everything in archaeology, but that's what I love about it. Right? Guess to me. <laughs> there is also the, I don't speak German. Tears may be a little better in German. So Gosek? Gosek? Gosek. <laughs> what is it? Gosek. Uh, I would pronounce it Gosek. Um, circle that, and that is in <laughs> Germany. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, mm, mm, questionable. <laughs> Just sound really angry when you say it and it's close enough, they'll understand you. Yeah, that is that is how you speak German. I always forget. <laughs> yeah, you just sound angry all the time. <laughs> uh, so that is a series of concentric circles that are dug into the ground and dates back to about 4,900 BC. It was like completely forgotten about, covered by a wheat field, and then was rediscovered in the early 1990s. Mm-hmm. So everything the archaeologists have dug up suggests that it was the site of various religious rituals including sacrifices so on the list and Mm -hmm. they realize that there are two gates that are cut into the outer circle and they align with the sunrise and the sunset of the winter solstice so somehow this circle is attributed to the solstice. We have no idea what went on back then, but it is one of those sites that aligns with this particular day. And it's really cool. If you guys look at the aerial photos, they're like perfect circles, considering that it was a field where people plowed for years and everything, like the circles are still intact. Like you can see them. That's how they discovered the site. Yeah, crazy. Right? Think how old those are. And they just kept going. Yeah. All those sacrifices paid off. <laughs> absolutely wild there are a few (laughs) others but those are the main ones that I wanted to cover unless Tara has any that she wants to add to the list Uh, I do want to point out that there are some in uh, the Americas which are approximately as old as far as they can guess because you know they have less uh, records of those but both Mexico and Peru have um, sites that basically align with the winter solstice as well so it's not just uh, European tradition um it's all it's just worldwide there were different societies that all celebrated this as a high holy day or something that was enough that they built huge monuments to it when you know they didn't have cars or anything to literally lift things except themselves (laughs) yeah which is absolutely crazy and you have to remember um for the ones that are in south america of exactly when that would be since they do line up with both the summer solstice and the winter solstice, those are switched. Mm-hmm. So if you are in the Southern hemisphere, those are going to line up with your dates in June rather than mm-hmm. right now. Um, but a lot of these sites line up with both of them. So always interesting. Yes. The majority of the sites line up with both of them. Or, but yeah, it's just so cool. It is so cool. And like these, you know, cultures across the world from each other had nothing to do with each other and didn't even know each other existed and somehow still they built similar things to recognize similar days. It's crazy to me. I love history. <laughs> it's so cool. I could never actually like be an archaeologist. That would just, oh, that's, that's beyond my skill level. But I, I think it's very cool. The patience like, very... To be like, I'm going to unbury this dime and see if yeah. it's worth something. Like that's, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I could not. I could not. But I mean, it's, what a, a very fun job, but I, I could never do it. I agree. I like to see what they, what they did all the work for. Yeah, exactly. I like the end result, but I don't want to actually do the work myself. Perfect. (laughs) Oh, such is my life. (laughs) It's the best of both worlds. Indeed. Uh, So Tara already really touched on the deities. So there's not too much more to cover that Jerry didn't we kind of touch on them. And we also touched on them last year when we were talking about the pagan origins of Christmas. We really covered Odin. Odin is kind of like the one that 
is, is sort of the main deity that's associated with Yule. Yule in name and origin is very Scandinavian. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it's really based on around Odin and his sleigh. We, um, I've talked about that on previous episodes with Justin too, and we talked about Norse paganism. Um, so we've really covered Odin and his association with Santa Claus and being Santa Claus, where like where all of that came from, because it is a very Norse based holiday. Oh, that was hard uh, to say. <laughs> well, and uh, because it was based on non Christian beliefs, it was all stolen. In uh, I believe it was 1659, the Puritans actually banned it here in America from celebrating because they said it was a uh, superstitiously. The traditions were superstitiously kept in other countries to the great dishonor of God and offense of others. So they ordered the people to not observe any such day as Christmas. And I got to tell you, before we even started, she has been super excited. I have been. <laughs> super, super excited to talk about pilgrims in relation I was to Christmas. So that was like the, the topic on the top of her mind. She was like, oh my gosh. What, as soon, like even before I hit record, she was like, I am absolutely going to cover the pilgrims. So I was like, okay, yes. you go ahead, girl. You go ahead. Okay. But think about this. So if you were caught celebrating and this, like the celebration list was for bearing of labor, feasting, clothing in any way whatsoever, they would fine you five shillings. What? <laughs> like, this is the most <laughs> random thing ever. And I love it. But they're not wrong. All of the Christmas traditions that were celebrated at the time were stolen. They were from other religions that just got taken. Which was our entire episode last year. Like that, that, that is always like focused mm-hmm. on. We were like, yes, everything, literally everything. Really, mm-hmm. like any sort of like Christmas thing you can come up with is is some sort of pagan tradition that was, that was stolen. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, that's absolutely true. But it's so funny that there's like this historical documentation that was like, yes, we, we don't believe in any of this. Yeah, it wasn't actually declared a national holiday in the U.S. until 1870. That seems so late. Right? And it actually it, wasn't celebrated throughout the U.S. until 1840, but yeah, it became a national holiday in 1870. Yeah, that, that just seems so late. But like my concept of time is very different now when people are like, oh, you were born in the 1900s. I'm like, you know what? you know what right it's just rude to think that (laughs) it's just rude and I don't want to hear it (laughs) so So, rude I know so rude so my concept of time is just like all over the place (laughs) like was now now that I'm thinking about it I'm like was 1870 that long ago like I don't know I don't know (laughs) (laughs) well in the history of our country (laughs) in the history of the world no if you think about all these ancient sites though and all of the traditions that have built up over centuries and thousands of years actually Christmas stealing it and taking it over is very recent. Yes, surprisingly so. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that's why we love all of these, like learning about all of these pagan things. That seeing just how far back they go and how deep it is, mm-hmm. and and so many, much more than just uh, Christmas. Oh yeah, for sure. But I feel like it's it's fun to know all of these things because it makes Christmas make sense. Because it did not make sense to me as a child. I was like, what? why? Why are we doing any of this? Like, it makes no possible sense. Like, historically, factually, like, there's just, like, random things. And, like, Easter, too, with, like, the bunny and stuff. Like, it's just, like, randomly thrown in. And I'm like, why? This makes no sense. And then when you start learning about, like, the pagan history, I'm like, oh, I get it now. And you're like, I see where you stole that. <laughs> like, how magic. <laughs> I'm like, but, but why? But why is there Santa? Like, why are there stockings? Like, it makes no sense in relation to baby Jesus. So I'm like, it, 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 this whole holiday is weird. It makes no sense. So I think that yeah. I was clearly a witch from a very young age because I was like, no, I do not accept. Like, no, no, <laughs> you have, thank you. You have no, no to hang a stocking over the fireplace and like Santa's going to come fill it. But why? Like, it's not like the favorite thing of like four-year-olds to ask. It's like, but why? Like, you can't, if you're a Christian, like, you can't explain it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know right. why. No one knows why. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was stolen from all of these pagan holidays. Exactly. <laughs> um, but I think that's why one of the, Yule is one of my favorites to celebrate as well. I think it's really great for broom closet witches because there's just yes. so many things that you can do that are like clearly associated with Christmas. So people just think that you're celebrating Christmas, but really you're celebrating Yule because that's where all of these traditions come from. So I would say it's like one of, if not the easiest, I think that and Samhain are like the two easiest to celebrate if you're still in the broom closet. I would say this one is definitely 
what I would consider the easiest to celebrate. I know I celebrated this for years when I was still in the broom closet. And even when I came out, a lot of my traditions might have changed slightly, but for the most part, not really. Yeah, like but I still like decorate barely, yeah. the trees. I still make a Yule log. I still, you know, like there's so many things that I did for years without even like thinking about it until again, witchcraft. And then I was like, oh, it makes more sense and it has more meaning now but I still had fun doing it when I was young. So I'm going to do it still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, as long as it's still fun, like that's, I totally agree. But I mean, like, that's like why we celebrate for 12 days. Like that makes mm-hmm. no sense in, in terms of Christianity. If you're basing it off of the Bible and Jesus, like 12 days, like why is it 12 days? Like what is the 12 days of Christmas? It makes no sense. Mm-hmm. But exactly. since Yule dates back to ancient Egypt, it's going back around to deities, which is like totally got off topic. Um, the ancient Egyptians celebrated the rebirth of Horus. So mm-hmm. the festivities lasted for 12 days. And that's when they would decorate their homes and everything with all of the lush greenery that was like magical and would ensure a prosperous year ahead. And then ancient Romans, you know, invaded and then began, began so celebrating nice. that like same holiday. They called it saturnalia and celebrated their god saturn um but a lot of the same things and again like the 12 days so all of that has like carried over into like 12 days of christmas i'm like but really it's 12 days of yule so if you have an advent calendar and you're in the broom closet just start it right after thanksgiving and then it falls right on yule (laughs) that is exactly what i did we have multiple advent calendars going here you know i mean i I don't need it to line up yeah, I don't, I don't need it to line up until December 1st. Like, who cares? Um, we we started, yeah, we got a dog one. We, John has a whiskey one, and I have a candy one. <laughs> so we're just, like, all <laughs> over the board. But I'm like, yes, we, like, literally started the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, you start the day after Thanksgiving, and it lines up perfectly with Yule. Yeah, exactly, which is a lot of fun. I mean, you could still enjoy all of these things and still celebrate Yule without everybody knowing that you are specifically celebrating Yule if you're still in the broom closet because that is exactly. perfectly fine if you are still in the broom closet and want to remain there no worries this this holiday has your back <laughs> yes I think that's one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite holidays not only because yay fire but because there's so much culturally that I grew up with that just makes sense and so I feel like everyone's celebrating with me I feel like that about Beltane too because big bonfire big party no one's hating on Beltane I feel like a lot of the sure. other holidays are more specific to witches and witchcraft and Wiccan and paganism in general. And so like, they're not as group activities. And even though I'm solitary, I like to rock a holiday. I'm not going to lie. I love to rock a good holiday with people. So yeah, you always love to celebrate the holidays, like real or made up yeah. <laughs> with, with a big They're not made up. Does. They're special and unknown. Special and unknown. Like uh, every Friday the 13th, she celebrates with her brother. They like name it yeah. after their last name. Yeah, we do. <laughs> like, celebrate their like own holiday. They like themes like every time it comes around. So uh, real or made yeah, up, <laughs> they are just like extra special days. So yeah, those those exist. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah you do like to. Your theme is pinata. Pinata, I like it. I think my favorite. Oh, oh, there's been so many good ones. I feel like Peacock was really good. Like you're, you Peacock was really fun. Yeah, you looked fabulous for that one. There's been a lot of good ones. Ooh, Pinata's gonna be one fun. Was pretty funny. Pineapple, oh, pineapple was pineapple. good. Feathers was mm. not as good. We left feathers everywhere. I'm still trying <laughs> I believe to it. Like, it was terrible, but I mean, fun time. Uh, I believe it. Holiday. Oh, Pinata's gonna be a good one. That'll be a lot. Of fun. Be you're just gonna good. leave candy everywhere. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be in Mexico for the first one because there's actually two. Uh, holidays next year because it's two Friday the 13th so oh I know you'll have to celebrate all of year you you, I I feel like you've celebrated one in in New Orleans didn't you was there one that Uh, fell on while you were there or did you just have a New Orleans themed we had a New Orleans themed one and then we did celebrate in New Orleans but that theme was actually sparkles oh see you're all over the place oh yeah all of these holidays (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's important to celebrate but talking of celebrations what's your favorite way to celebrate yule <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so like, let's get back to the topic at hand which is <laughs> yule so there are definitely a lot of ways that you can celebrate this holiday in or out of the broom closet because there's so many different aspects that yes. you can observe that are related to this day so first of course is the return of the sun that mm-hmm. is 
kind of the main theme of this because it, it, it may not seem <laughs> like, like the sun is returning at this time, but it is the longest night. So from here, the days are getting longer and longer. It obviously does not seem like that until spring, but it is true. Just but like it's little true by little. And it's amazing. So this is a happy time. <laughs> Little, little by little, the days are going to start getting longer. So it is the sun coming back around. So a yeah. lot of the festivities are associated with that. That's why oranges are so popular this year, this time of year, because they mm -hmm. symbolize the sun. Um, making pomanders is my favorite, like where you stick the cloves into that. the orange. That is my favorite. Everything about yeah. that smells so good to me. It just like reminds me of my childhood. Uh, I made so many last year that I was giving them to people that came to my house because I couldn't like have, so I had so many, the whole house smelled great. But like when I got a delivery from Amazon, I'd be like, here you go. Like <laughs> take this away from my house. <laughs> you give me so package. Many. I give you comment. <laughs> yep. And they had Mary like symbols and uh, I loved them. It was great. I also oh, love yeah. that. Yeah. That is definitely one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, return of the sun in general. So a lot of people will, uh, do something for the sunrise and sunset mm -hmm. on yes, this day. So if you are up early enough, or late enough <laughs> to <Early>. do that. <laughs> uh, but that is a huge part of the holiday. Also, community and charity in general mm -hmm. is a big part of the holiday. This was in ancient Roman times when they would actually recognize their slaves. They didn't have staff. I was going to say staff. That was the wrong word. They had slaves. That is the wrong word. <laughs> yeah, it's not staff. Staff you pay. No, they had slaves in ancient Rome. And this is when they would actually recognize them and give them some sort of gift and charity. Uh, now, obviously, even then they didn't do anything that was over the top. Mm -hmm. or expensive, but at least being acknowledged as a human being that happened <laughs> at this time and of that's year. That's important. It is. It is important. And um, something that we didn't do here <laughs> in America when we had slaves. So um, it was important in ancient Rome. So that it's something that has carried on as a time of year when we are grateful for what we do have and in mm -hmm. exchange, send that out into the universe and add something to our community in the form of charity. Uh, why a lot of people donate at this time of year, which I like to donate all year, but yeah. I feel like it's a good way to go above and beyond at this time. I would agree. Um, so one tradition that uh, we started a couple of years ago, me and my friend Amanda that I really enjoyed is, I don't know if anyone has ever played with flying paper, but it's like some of my favorite things because you light it on fire and then it flies. There's no bat here. It's amazing. But what we do... <laughs> is uh, we have three wishes um, or spells that we cast or ones for ourselves, ones for our family and friends and ones for the greater community. And we light them up and um, it's always really fun. We light them from the bonfire we have and it's something that then we can work towards um, once the sun rises again, but we always do it at sunset is when we have all the stuff ready and then we light it right at sunset to kind of celebrate the dark night and uh embrace all of that oh yeah i like that that's always it's fun really and, then, nice. and then then you get your fire i know you and then i get my fire <laughs> hey if i didn't have my fire that. you know it wouldn't be a tradition i embrace for too long <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah the, that's another great way to honor sort of ancient traditions in a modern way is prepping for the new year and making wishes yeah. for the new year whether you call them like intentions or wishes or resolutions I don't think like the name really matters like if it bothers you call it something else <laughs> like people really have like a problem with the word resolution so like don't call it that like call it something else but like Paris said this is like wishes that you yeah. are sending out into the universe and that is something that a lot of different cultures recognize mm -hmm. so and and not only for this time of year but I know for like this time of year a lot of people do recognize that new year like January 1st magical like inspiration I do I know like for a witch's calendar it doesn't mean any January 1st doesn't mean anything but for me it does I feel like it's a magical time of year I think there's the sheer amount of intentions and well wishes happening worldwide it's magical yeah it feels like a very energetic time like whether mm -hmm. you, know, you know it's it's yeah technically not on the wheel of the year, not recognized as like a day, but I feel a lot of energy on that day. So it does, is just something to like tap into, to just sort mm -hmm. of take this time between, you know, 
since Yule is like 12 days, you're starting on December 1st, but then you're, you're, you're going to keep going <laughs> and for another 12 days. <laughs> so it's a good time to sort of prep for 2023 and set up sort of like your wishes and intentions. But we've talked about this before, how like in bulk is <laughs> like February 1st is a good time to like actually start goals. Cause like a lot of people are not really as ready as they think they are on January 1st. I think this is, so I think the good thing about doing uh, the wishes now with the wishing paper and stuff is you set your intention, but you don't actually have to actively work towards it till February when you're more <laughs> inclined to do stuff. Yeah. I think people think that they're like more ready to start on January 1st than they actually are. Like there's a lot more yeah. of like you know, prep, especially if you were just thinking about it in these last couple of days, Mm -hmm. you know, like leading up to January 1st and like starting it first thing, January 1st in the morning, like a lot of people are not ready (laughs) at that point, which makes, you know, January a perfect month to prep. And then in bulk is when you can actually start. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I I like that idea as well. Also, I just tend to hibernate like a bear in winter because again I don't like it so <laughs> once the things thaw out I'll be back at it. <laughs> uh, well we went over kind of like the things that people could do is there anything else that we didn't mention that you do, usually do or are planning on doing for this particular yule um so I love making uh like I said I'm going to mispronounce it wasal um And basically it's a spiced warm drink. It's amazing. I highly recommend, um, I add cranberries and apple juice and cinnamon and nutmeg and oranges, and you just kind of boil it. It makes your house smell amazing. Uh, you can add anything you want to taste. I always do that. I boil that during the day. Um, and then I make sure that it's completed before nightfall and is, uh, the sun sets. We do our intentions. Uh, we light those up. We then darken the bonfire we had when it was still light out. And we kind of just take a moment to honor the darkness um, and that kind of thing. And then uh, I usually bring over coffee to my friend Amanda's house for sunrise so that we can drink coffee and watch the sunrise together and welcome the return of the sun and days getting longer and hopefully spring coming soon, soon, soon. (laughs) (laughs) No, I would never do that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we were definitely in the area where spring is not going to come soon. But you know what? That makes me happy. I just I'm like, happy no, shut up, go you. away. <laughs> I'm happy for you. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do love it. Um, and you usually do something Yule Log related, don't you? Yes. So we have done a Yule Log poorly every year for about five years now. Um, <laughs> we cannot get it to come together correctly. If anyone has tips or tricks that have worked or I would like to say fail proof tips or tricks. I'm ready. Um, if you just are like, Oh, you just wrap it in a cloth after you flatten it and it's still warm. And then you roll it up and it's fine. And then you cool it and then you unroll it and then you frost it and you roll it. That does not work for us. I would like to say we've tried it many times. We've done multiple flavors. Um, last year it somehow ended up burnt and undercooked. So <laughs> I yeah I think that they like turn they look so beautiful and like all the instructions make it sound super easy but then when you actually go to do it you're like wait a minute wait a minute something is not lining up and it's harder than you like think that it's going to be but then I've heard from a lot of people that like once you like master it like it's fine like every year is like a total breeze making it so it's just like getting over like the hurdle of mastering it yeah which I don't know it's not personally in my wheelhouse I have like the traditional like Yule log that is like a like chunk of wood mm-hmm. <laughs> and you like put the candles in that then so, yeah we have that I too Jesse, that. um drilled holes in it for us so that's actually where we light the wishes off from oh I like that that's nice. then we can put it right in the fireplace um so it's safely contained again not in the middle of the freaking floor and then <laughs> um it looks really pretty and it's kind of nice because we can put um, yeah, we can put our, ourselves. So Dusty gets one, Amanda and me, and then we light those. And then for our family and friends, we light those. And then we do the community and we light those. Oh, that's really nice. I like that. It works really well. And it's, it's very meaningful to us. And it's kind of nice because then you can really focus both on yourself and the community. You don't have to make an either or choice. Cause I think that is where people feel selfish is they're like, well, I don't want to do it for myself because I need it for the community. Okay. You matter. 
as well. Like everyone deserves well wishes for themselves. And I think that's hard for a lot of people. And this is a good time to do it. Mm -hmm. Very good point. You cannot pour from an empty cup, right? It's not the saying like you got to take care of yourself too. So a, you're important too. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, I feel like we touched on all of your Yule plans. I feel like I've touched on my Yule plans a ton over on YouTube and Patreon. Um, I have not been doing Vlogmas because that's just like way too much work, but like video every Friday I can, I've been able to handle. So um, yeah, I've like, talked about my Yule plans and stuff. So before we, you know, finish up here, let's chat about your, I guess, witchcraft lately and where you think it might be going in 2023. Because I know people have been asking about you and had lots of questions <laughs> and your personal life has been crazy. Yes. <laughs> this year and especially in like the second half of this year because we were just like talking about this before we recorded um but we had plans to do like more episodes and like there were yeah. a few things that like you wanted to talk about but life like your personal life totally got away from you which totally is like not, not yeah like not not topic for conversation or like podcast topic but just like just to say that like you're yeah things happen of things, like, um, yeah things, things over happen. I mean, everything like, else <laughs> yeah like breaking your foot's kind of a big deal like I mean breaking my foot my dad having surgery my brother got married I got COVID for the first time yeah lots of things happened this year <laughs> yeah yeah so you're just totally got away from you and then like all of a sudden we find ourselves in December mid -de mid December uh mid -December. when this uh, yeah well when we're recording it's early December but mid December for when this episode is going live and then all of a sudden it's 2023 so like how mm -hmm. the hell did that happen? I don't know. But <laughs> let's chat about, which like to, to say, like, hopefully, like, we'll see, we'll see how 2023 is going. But like, Tara has other topics that like she wants to talk about, like on the yes, podcast. I do. Like, she has other I things that, like, do. <laughs> she wants to share. So we would like to, because people have asked me like, what's Tara's Instagram? I'm like, oh, like, she's got a personal Instagram. And I don't know if she wants to share that. Like, so. no, it's a personal one. And it's yeah, closed. It like, so <laughs> yeah, it was like, you don't really share like you, you don't have a witchy Instagram. So it was like, we're going to like circle back in 2023. Um, and like, <laughs> maybe then when like things calm down, that like we can go over a few more topics. So let's just like yeah. talk about where, where your sort of witchcraft practice has been within all of that and where you see it going in the next year, sort of like topics you're interested in. Okay. Uh, for sure. So uh, I think last time I was on, we had talked about, I was reading more on the Druids and Druidity and starting to kind of incorporate that more into my practice. Um, I've continued that. I um, really like everything except the language barrier. I am not good at languages. I barely speak English, um, as everyone can tell <laughs> from my pronunciation of things. So the language has been difficult for me to translate, but a lot of the concepts are very in line with what I uh, have always been believing and have been working on. So I've been doing a lot more with nature. Um, I have been doing a lot of protection work. Uh, speaking of Yule, I've got mistletoe and I put holly up. Uh, on my trees this year. Normally I don't like live plants, but I've dried these. Um, I collected them myself. There, there's no damage done um, to the ecosystems when I did that. I have a problem with live Christmas trees because unless you're replanting it, I'm really angry at you and I apologize, that's my dog. <laughs> Hold on, oh no man. Oh. Oh. Bo is like, I do not want to hear about any of these poisonous plants that you have up that I cannot right. be allowed to reach, this is rude. <laughs> I, they are on the tree uh so I put them pretty high on the tree because Bo is afraid of the tree which works out well but he's not <laughs> afraid of anything in front of the tree and he's not afraid of presents so the presents are kind of hot, hidden behind the tree and then the mistletoe is like hanging <laughs> from my fake tree so <laughs> so he cannot get to it yes he cannot oh, get well. to it um, all right such a stinker um but I've been doing a lot more, um, like I said, incorporating those kinds of things. And then, oh, this will be really exciting. I haven't even told you this. I found a tarot set that works for me. What? What? Yes, it's oh. been years. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this has never happened for you. I know. And it's hilarious when I tell you what tarot set it is. Are you ready to laugh your butt off? Oh my gosh, I'm so ready. Uh, it's Disney's Hocus Pocus tarot deck and guidebook. 
Oh, of course it is. <laughs> of course it it's is. So why well would... for me. <gasps> why wouldn't it be? If nobody is familiar about, you know what? I'm going to have to like, post a picture. If nobody is familiar about why this is like not surprising me at all. Tara has the perfect Winifred costume like she because she's got the red hair and she just like does the makeup and like the hair perfectly and like it's just like the perfect like she makes a perfect Winifred and it has been a go-to costume for you for a few years now years. And you uh, rock it yeah. every time so I'm not surprised by this at all but that is amazing it's so funny um so strangely enough it was uh my Halloween gift from Amanda as like kind of a jet a, like a joke kind of thing and it works for me it just like I don't know what it is and I haven't That's even been actually crazy. looking. Isn't that crazy? So um, I've been doing more with that. Um, I've been pretty introspective because of the personal life issues. So it's really been helping me kind of, like we said, you can't help, you can't fill someone else's cup if your cup is empty. So I've been trying to do a lot more introspection and working on myself as, you know, uh, my foot was broken for a while and I couldn't do much with that. So yeah, this tarot set works for me. It's super cute. Um, they do have, they've like renamed some of the cards, obviously to match the movie and stuff. So it's, I love it though. It's been working really well. So I've been doing a lot more with that. Um, and as so people fun. who listen to the podcast for a long time, that's so unusual for my, my practice. I've oh yeah, definitely. Ever for me. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's totally different for you. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. Very so that is. It's very exciting. It's been working really well. Um, so I've been using that quite a bit more. Uh, the Druidity, I've been doing a lot with that. I've actually been uh, doing less kitchen uh, witchcraft, which has been the basis of my practice for years as I kind of discover this new path. Um, in 2023, I think I'm going to do a lot more with the Druidity traditions and um, folding those in. I have set up the beginning of an altar. <laughs> it's not where I want it to be, but I haven't had an altar in my home for 10 years, probably longer. Um, so that's a change. There's been a lot of changes actually oh, in yeah. um, just in the past few months. Again, personal changes, introspection, and just things that make me happy and just calm. Um, I've really been focusing on, and we all, we grow and change. It's, it's just interesting that my path is almost looping back to where I started with the tarot and this time it works. So it's been really exciting for me to kind of explore that path. That's never been open to, for me before. Um, oh, yeah, that's very interesting and fun to sort of go back to it and like go back yeah. to your roots kind of. Yeah. Cause when I first got started, like everyone had did tarot when I was first getting started, I feel like that was like, this is going to be a terrible analysis or a comparison, but it's like, it's the gateway to witchcraft was tarot back in the day. Yeah, yeah like, of course. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and so everyone had tarot decks or multiple tarot decks and it, they just never worked for me. So the fact that I stuck with witchcraft in spite of that, um, but yeah, I just kind of put that aside and did lots of other things. Uh, but kitchen witchcraft has always been the basis of a lot of my work. I've been doing a lot more green witchcraft versus kitchen witchery. Um, like I said, the tarot deck that actually works for me has been so strange, but fun to explore. Uh, so do you see yourself taking that into 2023? Do you want to keep going with that? Is there anything that you're like looking to add or change? So um, I am looking to incorporate more of the druidity aspects of things that I've started to incorporate. Um, like I said, the barrier that I found is the language. They have different words. It's so things. hard. It's it so is hard. so hard. <laughs> it, that has really been my hang up for a lot of it. Um, I don't blame you at all. That is a very tough one. It's, it's very difficult. And it's because of where they get the language from. Nothing. If you look at the word, you're like, oh, this is pronounced this way. You are wrong. I guarantee you're wrong. I don't know what else to tell you. You're wrong and how it's pronounced. And I'm not good at pronouncing words anyway. So that's rough on me, but I love the concepts. I've really liked what I've been able to incorporate so far. So I think I'm really going to continue with that um, into 2023. Uh, I'm trying to get better about, I've always done something for every Sabbath. Like that's never been an issue, but usually it's something small. I'm trying to more even handedly 
celebrate the Sabbath. Uh, obviously, Yule is like a month long and Beltane is like a week long. And I love those holidays. But like, Letha, I don't tend to do a lot with. <laughs> That's on my list too. It's like, let's let's try <laughs> for all these. Because there's a lot that I don't like recognize or like do anything for but it might be fun to to switch that up well and that's that's my goal is to um because I've always done at least one thing for the holiday but it, it might be something simple like making myself uh tea with herbs that I grew myself that are seasonal or uh making fresh bread and sharing it with friends again with herbs that I've grown myself kitchen witchery kind of stuff that's tends to have been how I've celebrated for years and I like to do more I think on the religious side um because my witchcraft is religious based and I feel like I've kind of been neglecting that uh since 2020 because you know the world exploded and things happened and yeah whatever so (laughs) I like to get more back into that aspect I think it's good for me and my grounding it's good for me and my practice and I really like uh druidity is from what I'm learning and exploring it's more almost like a mindset. And I really am appreciating that. So I think I'd like to bring that more into my day-to-day life with my witchcraft rather than having like one big celebration. I'd like to do small things here and there, but still more balanced, I think is my goal for 2023. I like that. That's a good word. Yeah. I just, I feel like I've been like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh for the last few months. And I think balance is going to be my key (laughs) into 2023. And, um, yeah, just kind of finding my footing in this new path that I find myself on, which is very exciting, but also weird because I've been practicing for 20 some years and I'm like, oh, I'm going a different way now. Which I think is really great for people to hear because I think a lot of newbies are uncomfortable with that and feel like, oh no, <laughs> like thing, things are changing and I'm not like connected to this anymore and like double down and and try to like stay with that but like it, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this you're going to change like things are going to change yeah, and it's totally no, fine yeah yeah you gotta I, just do something new mm-hmm. and I think it's been really good for me personally just reconnecting like you said kind of going back to my roots um with the tarot and um rediscovering a lot of the green witchcraft that I'd kind of put aside for more kitchen uh inspired things I still do kitchen stuff because I I'm sorry. I'm going to cook for you. I'm going to cook for me. I'm going to cook for the world. It's fine. But, um, just kind of rediscovering a more, like I said, balanced kind of thing. Um, I've really been reflecting on that. And I think it's hard for you for a lot of years because you moved so much. So it's kind of hard to do like anything green and like Mm -hmm. maintain that when you're moving so much, like now that you've like, it's like stable and you're like, I can grow herbs. Look at that. Like (laughs) it's hard on them. Even if you have them like potted, padded to move them a bunch of times, like from apartment to apartment. And you never know like what the sun is going to be like. And like that, that is really a hard thing to sort of incorporate and continue with if you're going to move every single year. Well, and I think part of that is why I didn't have an altar, like just setting it up and finding the perfect space that it wouldn't get disturbed. And then it just wasn't worth it. But I've been in the same house now for seven years. Um, I am looking to move in the next couple of years, but not directly. So I'm really just kind of embracing where I am now um, and just finding the balance in that. And as we all know, if you've listened to this, grounding is very difficult for me to achieve. So I think this has really helped me just kind of put down roots in a way in my witchcraft, in my personal life, in my day-to-day life. And so that's really what I'm focusing on. I think going into 2023 is just incorporating what I am appreciating and is working for me and just letting go of stuff that I might have done for years and years that maybe isn't, it shouldn't be a priority with what uh, my growth and change is coming about. So good, good and worthy. You feel like I could handle on this or like understanding of it of what's coming back <laughs> that's good that's yeah. how, about, how about you are you uh planning any big changes in 2023 that you want to talk oh, about good god no um no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it has been enough changes in 2022 that I'm like you know what we're done we're done with the change and you know how I am like I hate change anyway mm-hmm. and I'm terrible with change so like mm-hmm. the fact that everything has been so like changey and up in the air in this like past year that I'm like you know we're done we're gonna like the house is finally gonna be 
like you know what I can't even like say that like I want to say the house is finally going to be finished but it's been two freaking years and stuff <laughs> like that yet so okay so like ideally in the beginning of the year the house is going to be finished and my plan is to like sit inside of it and enjoy it and never freaking leave it <laughs> yeah it's fine. I mean that's it's a solid done. plan yeah and not change and just we did all the changes and now we're done and we're just going to sit there and everybody's like are you going like vacation like no like we did all the work mm-hmm. and just sit here and I'm enjoy everything and we can never leave me again that is my intention so there you go. yeah good god no no changes I feel like there will probably be like changes of my practice that will like come along with that of just like sort mm-hmm. of like adapting um, settling but, into a solid path yeah exactly but like any like sort of big like life changes like absolutely not I do not want to do that anymore like no more no more <laughs> it's done enough <laughs> it, it's been like too many changes in the last like I mean since the pandemic started like wait yep. so I do not oh, want to do any more um that is my goal <laughs> like let's just go the rest of my life with no more changes after that that would be perfect the rest and of your life the rest of my life. I hate change hate it um <laughs> and I'm terrible with it so ideally I would like that but yeah I think there's just going to be some like maybe like growing and adjusting based mm-hmm. on like staying home more and like being in a like solid space because even as we're recording this I'm still like at my mother's house and like we're yep. just living here until like my house is done so like I'm still not even home so I mean me yeah I actually know no by the time this goes live no we're still not going to be there so like you're not going to be there no 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 <laughs> um so yeah it, I, it's still not so I feel like maybe like in January we'll be like home and like things will like settle and there's just going to be things to like figure out with that because it changes like sort of like placement and like what I can do and like how I'm going to like have time for things and how to like fit things mm-hmm. into my day like that will change because right now like I can't fit anything into my day which like you're very familiar with in like the past yes. couple of months like it's like mm-hmm. it's impossible like you have so yeah. much other stuff going on that it feels impossible to sort of like slot like the witchcraft in there especially anything that's like mm-hmm. more like ritual or like holiday related like you're like yes. no there's just like not there's space no- for it mm-hmm. so I would like to like you said like make space for that next year and, and be able to plan that out a little bit better I hope yeah. <laughs> um but in a very still in a very like low-key way there you go. Nice. So that's that's about it. <laughs> um, but I don't really have any like concrete plans as to how that will happen. I'm still working on that, but I, I sort of use this time to I, I guess like figure that out and plan that. And that's kind of what Yule like part of Yule is for me. Um mm-hmm. and that Yule season, especially that dead week between like Yule and New Year's, yeah. or, like dead two weeks really. Um that nobody gets anything done like there's no actual like work like it's just kind of like no man's land like there, there's no sense of time um so I use sort of that time to kind of actually like make plans and finalize and know what I'm going to do like starting yep. January 1st which I think this year will actually be January 2nd right isn't the first on a Sunday it is I'm pretty excited so, I'm second off from work ooh, ooh. Um, I know I have a lot um yeah so I feel like for me then and I know you too because you are a Monday start person we have talked about that yep um Mm -hmm. I feel like then I'm not going to actually like do anything on the first it's like everything's going to be starting like the second Mm. so like hit the ground running like on the second well uh for all the listeners that maybe don't have uh plans to find yet one of the things that I do like to do on Yule and obviously I've been thinking about this a lot already, but um, once the sun sets and the bonfire is done, just meditate in the darkness. Honestly, like even though I hate winter and I hate darkness, I want sunlight, even though it hates me. Um, just take the time to kind of clear your mind and just see what comes up. Because I think this is a really good time of year for people's paths, not necessarily to change, but to find their feet on the path they're already on. I like that. Yeah, it's it's a good time to just, like we said, like just settle into where you're, you're meant to be. That's and then in February, tip. when you're actually ready to start plans, <laughs> that's when you, you can take steps that way. <laughs> that is a good tip too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hate winter. I know you love it, but oh, it's so I do cold. love it. I do love it. I think, I think. 
this was an especially long episode and we covered (laughs) everything that we wanted to for Yule and jumping into the new year unless there's anything that you wanted to add to um I am actually looking at the outline you sent me to see if there's anything we missed oh wait wait, wait, outlines because (laughs) it's very important that I have an outline otherwise obviously I talk about pilgrims so yeah that was not on the outline you should really wanted to touch on the pilgrims but we did it he did. I, everyone needs to know they outlawed it because they said it was too many ancient superstitions. It wasn't about Christmas. And I am 100% <laughs> still accurate. Logic, right? I was like, <laughs> their logic's not wrong. <laughs> no, no, it's not. So I think we hit everything. Look at that. Look at that. It only took us an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, okay. So that is everything. So if you have any questions, or any specific topics that if we like come up with the time in 2023 to do another one um, that you would like Tara to cover, then definitely let me know. You can reach out over on Instagram or through email, which Wednesdays at gmail.com and let me know. There's also a survey available. I always have that linked up until the first. So you can answer these survey questions and let me know specifically what you want to hear from or let Tara know what you want to hear from, from her. I know she wants to cover druids and and we're Mm -hmm. gonna make it work we're gonna find it we're gonna figure it out we're gonna find time (laughs) we're gonna figure it out and hopefully life calms down for like personal life calms down for both of us and we can like sell and then balance and do these things in 2023 so everybody wish us luck yes (laughs) and good intentions think that is everything that we have for this episode so thank you tara for being here yeah, thanks for uh, working with me on timing. You guys do not know how hard it is for us to find time to actually sit down and do this. <laughs> I know it's so rough. Uh, but that is everything for this episode, and I will see you in the next one. All right, bye, everyone. Good talking to you. Need even more? Subscribe to Patreon and YouTube for exclusive bonus content. Order a themed witchcraft box every month through Witch Wednesdays on Etsy. Be sure to follow on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast. Find all these links and more at witchwednesdays.com.